Okay, we're going to look at a, a problem. Is uh, Can we write a Python function that has a variable uh, where we save the value between calls so that the data in the variable or variables can persist between calls? Uh, this is something that's used in C. Let me show you an example. So this is a C function that uh, is called inc. And when it comes into the function, it defines what's called a, a static int. And so that's an integer value called counter, which is initially set to zero. But this isn't like a normal local variable in Python that uh, gets uh, initiated every time you call the function. It only gets initiated once. And then it exists and persists uh, between calls. So this counter remembers the previous count. So every time you call and you increment the counter here and return it, it's going to just count up. So this is something we'd like to be able to do in Python that's very nice. Now there are other ways of doing this in Python. Uh, what you can do is you can use a uh, define a class with an instance variable and then define a method for your function that uses that instance variable. So that would persist the value. Uh, you can also use a, a module global variable inside the function and, uh, and, and do that. Uh, but it's nice to learn a way to do this more like the C way. Uh, let's look at how the C works here. So this is the, uh, every time you call increment, uh, it's going to increment the counter. Uh, the first time through, though, it's going to set it to 0 and increment it to 1. So I have a loop here that prints out the values. Uh, so let me show you this running. So we'll compile it. And it'll run it and you'll see it just counts from 1 to 10. So this is what we're going to show you in Python. Um, so how do we do this in Python? Well, uh, when we have a function name, everything in Python is an object. So a function is an object, and any object you can add attributes to. Uh, so you can refer to it as the function name dot the name of the attribute you want. Uh, so for example, we could create an attribute called counter inside of a function called inc. And uh, the other thing we need to do is how do you set an initial value in the function so that it only does it once. And we're going to show you how you can do that using the get attribute function, which is a built-in function. So let's look at our increment Python code here. And what I've done is I've showed you the C code equivalent on the right here. So we come into increment, we define a function called increment, and we say uh, the name of the function, inc, which is an object, and we're saying uh, we want to access, uh, we want to set a uh, attribute name called counter to what this returns. Now, get attribute will look up an attribute that's part of an object, so it's going to look up the value of the uh, the function inc attribute called counter, and you have to put this as a string. And if it doesn't currently exist, this is a default argument for what value it should have. So this sets the initial value. So that looks up the initial value of uh, counter, or if you've called it the, uh, over and over again, it's going to look up the existing value of counter. Then it increments the counter. So when you refer to one of these variables, you always have to preface it with the uh, name of the function dot, and then return it. So here we, uh, we loop 10 times and we print out this. And so let's run this. And you can see it does the same thing as the C code. Uh, so now we're going to look at how do we do a little more complex problem. And what I wanted to do, and this is originally why I tr tried to first try to do this, is I wanted a function that would give me random numbers out of a, a, a fixed set of numbers. Uh, so actually I was looking up colors, and I didn't want to repeat colors next to each other or close to each other. So the idea is you want to create a random sequence that does not locally repeat. So suppose you're, uh, in our example, suppose you want to uh, randomly choose numbers between 1 and 10, but uh, you don't want a number you've just chosen to be close to something in the last three numbers. So here's an example of what we don't want. We don't want uh, the value 2. So here we're picking random numbers, and it picks 1, 2, and 3, but then goes back and picks 2 again, and 2 is too close to this. 
and that picks 8 and then uh, after one separator number it picks 8 again or picks 6 two times in a row. So this is a bad sequence. We're just too close together. What we want is if, if something repeats like 1 here, there's at least three digits in between. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to remember the last three numbers we chose and if the random number we pick conflicts with that, we'll, we'll find another number. So let's look at the Python code which is called sequence.py. Uh, so we're going to use random, so we're going to use two things from random. Sample uh, is a definition in the random module that's available in Python, which given a list, which is the population, it will randomly select k things out of that list. So you see that here. And so if I have a, a 10 numbers and I say sample three of them, it'll randomly pick three things out of the list and it will pick them all uniquely out of the list. Uh, so we're going to use that. And then ran int gives you a, uh, just picks a random number from A to B inclusive. So we're going to use that to do uh, pick a number b between 1 and 10 inclusive. So here's the definition of sequence. So first we have to preload it with some memory to, uh, just to get it going. So we use get attribute and we're defining uh, the name of the function here, sequence.last3, which will pick, we'll remember the last three numbers. And it's going to uh, look up the previous last three if it exists, but if it doesn't exist, it creates a list. So it calls sample uh, from the range 1 to 11. So that's uh, a, the, initial, the list of random numbers we're going to pick. And it says pick up three samples. So that's going to preload a list with three values. Uh, then we pick a number from 1 to 10, and while that number is in the history uh, that we're keeping, uh, we don't want to use it. So as long as it's in the history, we're going to keep picking a new number using randint. So this will pick an i that isn't repeated in the history, and then it's going to append i to our history and then drop the first thing in our history off. So that's going to remember our last three numbers and then just return i. So when we run this, uh, let's go here. And run sequence, py. And I'm going to do 35 in a row. Oops. Uh, typing error here. And there you go. So here's uh, 35 numbers. And you can check, and you'll see that the closest repeating number will always have three numbers in between. Uh, so that's our little lesson here. So you should have learned uh, uh, how you can create a local, the equivalent of a static uh, variable inside of a function like C does. Uh, and this gives you a little more complex problem to see one way you might use that.